Yo, what's going on, and welcome back to Dark Souls Remastered as we work our way towards building an invasion character. So last time we killed Smo and Ornstein. This time, I forgot that we didn't save enough souls to buy the Crest of Artorias. So instead, we might try to do a different part right here. We'll see whether we get invaded or not real quickly. If we don't, then we'll look for some summons to go help us do the Hydra. But if we do, then we might just go do the Hydra by ourselves. You don't need the Crest of Artorias to get to Sif, but the other way is very annoying. Oh, I didn't mean to leave all these trees up. The other way is going to require us to run past where the Hydra is. So we'd probably like the Hydra to already be dead. I'm not seeing any summon signs around here. So we'll go to the Hydra. and check out if there's any summon signs over there. I'm sure that there are people helping out with it. Otherwise, we could probably do it. It's not like it's super difficult or anything. And we finished up our HP stat last time. So we're as tanky as we're going to get, besides the fact that our armor is going to get upgraded to be tankier. But we haven't gotten to that yet. I think that's last on our to-do list. Is there anything in that corner back there? Would not appear so. So you'll remember that we've been here before to get the grass crest. We also dropped here to get that longbow. Helped us kill the capra demon. And there is a black knight down there who draw or who has a halberd if you're interested in getting a halberd he's gonna be your only bet before the end of the game uh excuse me you're gonna get hit oh that just goes through you i was not told. I thought it would hit you and collide with you. Where was that item that I saw? Oh, here it is. I don't actually know what this is. Souls? Sweet. Okay. So now we're gonna approach from over here. We'll drink real quick. Oh my lordy. And then now that we're close enough, he should do a melee attacks. I can't uh, move? Okay, we did cut off one head. Whoa. Alright, well. Apparently we got hit there. So we should definitely keep... Oh, he shoot. No, don't do that. We're definitely too close to you for you to shoot at us. Pick this up. Just regular night stuff. There goes another head. Oh, I couldn't actually reach that one. Did we get another one? Yeah. We only got one 
hit on that head. I want to make sure we just get close to him so he does his melee attack. Nice, we got the difficult head. Two left. Excuse me? I'm right here. You're not gonna be able to hit me with that. And there's one head left. So there's two kill conditions for the Hydra. It's actually... It'll die automatically if you cut off all of its heads. Or the other option is if you do enough damage to it, you can actually kill it before all of its heads are cut off. And so if you have like an Ultra Greatsword or something and you're cutting off the heads but you're doing more than enough damage to cut the heads off, then you'll end up with the Hydra dying before all the heads are actually gone. That was easy enough. Even with a plus 10 weapon, we were two shotting the heads. So now we're gonna do the steps that we need to take to get to the DLC. Which, since we kill, you gotta kill the Hydra. Then, if you don't want to leave, then you can just immediately log out, come back. And then there's going to be this golden golem here that we had to kill. And the whole logging out thing just essentially reloads the area. And by reloading the area, for some reason, the golem... Or the game was built in a way where it doesn't exactly register that you've accomplished tasks without you reloading it, but... It's whatever. It's kind of just been a Dark Souls thing. Where you gotta reload. Then this girl leaves. Her name's Dusk. She's the important part. You can actually do all of this stuff without the DLC. And then... Oh my gosh, you gotta trudge through water. We have fast roll though, so we can get through it a little bit faster. And then that ladder is actually the ladder we're going to take to get to Sif. So we might as well just do that now. Dusk sign, actually we might have to go talk to her first. I don't remember. So we should definitely just do it. So Dusk actually puts down a summon sign over here, which we have to reload again for. It's not your normal summon sign where she'll help you. She is instead going to just be a merchant who stands here. As you can see, there's no accepting the summon or anything. I just pressed A on it once and it started immediately. She summons in. She doesn't even look like a phantom. Can learn a gesture from her. And then she's just gonna have some Ulaseal magics. And I think you have to exhaust her dialogue real quick. And that should be all we have to do here. And now we'll run up to where Sif is. And we're gonna try not to die, but I hate going from this way. The other way with the crest is way easier. But it's just how it goes. We'll probably get invaded as well. I don't know what a good solution is right now because we're short on souls to buy the crest. Should probably just save enough souls to buy the crest at this part. We burned all of our soul items, so we can't just buy the crest like that. I suppose we could pop our boss souls. If we die, we'll pop our boss souls. 
I don't know how much those are worth, but. Is this a soul item over here? That could be useful. It is. That's actually a pretty big soul item. And then we got some giant ladders to climb. Going from this direction really sucks, because I think there's a bunch of annoying enemies here as well. I don't know what's over there. I actually think we want to go this way. This should take us into the normal forest. Where there's just going to be some forest hunters that will probably try and kill us. But we could probably run past them. That's a mage. That's another guy. Damn. Fairly certain. We have Ferris f chasing us right now. That's the bandit. And I think if we talk to her, they stop. Okay. But now we've been invaded, so we're just gonna peace out. There is giant stone armor right behind that building where we just crossed the bridge. In case you ever need that. We're not gonna let the invader even catch up to us. Because there's no good point. We're just gonna run straight to the boss. Is he chasing us? I have no idea if he even knows where we are. I don't see him anywhere. Although if this door opened a little bit faster, that'd be cool too. I don't actually know if they can chase you into here. I don't see why not, but the fog wall's all the way up there, so. The boss fight starts right here. I'm grab some chapstick before I skip the cutscene. Oh, we can't skip the cutscene because there's an invader in our world. Oh! You had to tell me that he left? Like, that's great and all. Ziff. <laughs> Stop running away, buddy. Oh, okay. Um, well, I might be dead. Alright, we do no damage. So this is going to be an annoying fight. We just got to work our way through his health bar. Oh! Okay. I'm surprised we did not get hit there. So when Sif gets low, he actually gets significantly easier. He's not there yet. Oh my lordy, I'm definitely rolling on time for these. But if you say so, game. That's our last heal. I disagree. can't hit you. Stop. Sif is being a right annoying right now. There we go. So beat Sif. Got the Covenant of Artorias. And we're actually gonna grab the Hornet Ring back here. It's gonna add effects to your parries. Make him do more damage. I think it increases it by like 30% damage. Our Homeward Bone now. We didn't rest at the Undead Parish. Oh well. So we essentially skipped the entire part of having to buy that whole, um, 
the whole crest of Artorias. We didn't have to do that at all, which is very good. And we're actually, we can get a few levels here. Get four levels. So yeah, the Crest of Artorias is going to let allow you to sit at that first bonfire where I look for summon signs. And it would make it, it makes the run to Sif a lot shorter. But as you can see, you can go around the other way and make it to Sif just fine. Um, what else do we need to do at the moment? We could go get the item that we need for uh, the DLC. So I suppose we can go do that. Although, there's a chance that we die. Because there are some annoying boars in the way. Thank you for letting us walk by. I appreciate it. So we still have a few annoying parts left to actually being able to complete this character. Oh. Never mind. We cannot go do the DLC yet. I lied. We're just going to homeward bone again. We can't go do the DLC because you can only go through those gates to get the Lord Souls if you've placed the, uh, what's it called? The Lord Vessel. And unfortunately, we are not allowed to place the Lord Vessel yet. Because if we do that, then we can't make an invasion character. So up there is going to be, you can see him. In that little doorway, King Seeker framped up there. He just warped out of existence. But we don't want to talk to him. If we talk to him, then we can no longer become an invader. Or we can't get the red eye orb, I suppose. Because if we place the Lord Vessel with him, then the other primordial snake will never appear. And the other primordial snake is going to be down here. And this is where it is going to get interesting. We're going to change it up. We're going to put the gold serpent ring on. There's a few reasons for that. And we're going to equip... We don't need that, I don't think. We're going to equip our transient curses right here. Do we have anything else to make us do lots of damage? No, maybe we'll use the gold pine resin. And we're going to switch to our transient curses. And venture into New Londo. So the idea is we're going to want to drain the water out of here first. And then getting to the boss should be fairly simple. I also don't think you can get invaded in this area until you have drained the water. Is this some more transient curses? Yep, this is why we equipped the gold serpent ring, so we'd get a higher rate of transient curses. So we don't have to buy any, pretty much. Also, if they die in the floor like that, sometimes their item can actually be in the floor. So I was just checking. Oh, jeez, where'd you come from? Oh, hi. So we are just killing everything, hoping for transient curses, maybe. Once we get to like five, then we're pretty much never going to run out. So here is where I can point out. Oh, never mind. 
Hold on. Did you drop an item in the wall? Who knows. But right there, that chest is actually the very large ember. So you're gonna have to drain the water, go down below, and then you'll come back up that staircase right there and you'll be able to get to that chest. We're not gonna go grab it. Although we maybe should grab it, but I don't really want to waste a whole bunch of chunks getting a plus 15 weapon. This lady is gonna scream if you let her scream and she'll summon a bunch of ghosts. She's also guarding two transient curses. So that's why I ran that way. Grab those transient curses real fast. Um, here's a ladder that's supposedly a shortcut. I don't remember how to get onto that shortcut. Oh, you just drop off at that first staircase and you can get to the shortcut. And that's a soul item. I like soul items, so I will grab them. And now we're going to come into this building, which is just going to be full of ghosts. Full of ghosts. Oh. There they are. Just took them a little bit. There we go. We'll sip up a little bit, and then we gotta run into this room and kill this lady before she screams. Mission accomplished. Oh, we got some items. Grab this item. So we have plenty of transient curses, but we are going to keep on the gold serpent ring. Because in a moment... Can you stop that? Stop! How are you still hitting me? I thought you are not allowed to come onto this roof. This roof is sacred ground. But we'll talk to this guy since we have the Lord Vessel. He'll give us the key to the seal. If you don't have the Lord Vessel, you can always just kill him. Um, he sells transient curses and resist curse. I think that's all he does. He can also break your curse. So if you don't want to go get a purging stone and you get cursed by a basilisk, he's the guy who's going to be able to help you. Which actually, if you're cursed, you're going to be able to fight the ghosts in here, which is an interesting little thing that I did not know, but I learned. So down here, I don't remember what this item is, but we're gonna grab it, figure it out. Oh, that's useless. Unless you want a divine weapon or a lightning weapon of some sort. There's some more souls, soul items. So we're actually gonna go up here because there's a free humanity. And we do like our humanity. Over there is a ring of sacrifice. I don't know what that item is down there. But if you want to go grab it, you can just run through that building down there. Please don't. Thank you. So you can see our first transient curse still hasn't even run out yet. Because it's grayed out in the bottom left there. So they last a very long time. So now we'll actually drain the water by doing this. And this is the part that I'm not sure where I'm supposed to drop at. There's somewhere where you can just drop and be like at the end. I think it's this way. Oh, we need to pop another one of these. Otherwise, we're going to have some ghosty ghost problems. Okay, we're going to have ghosty ghost problems either way. Because I can't hit you. Oh, it did not pop the curse. She canceled the curse popping. That's why we have ghost problems. I see. How obnoxious. So I don't know if we can be invaded up here now. But I know we can be invaded. 
So that's the boss fog right there. So if we drop right here, we should just be able to go straight to the boss. So let's just do that. Why not? And if we do want to kill like Dark Wraiths or something, the Dark Wraiths are going to have a high drop rate, or not a high drop rate, but they're going to have a decent drop rate on Titanite Chunks, which are going to be good to getting your weapon to plus 15 or something of the sorts. I think you also needed to upgrade your armor, which is why I came in here with this ring on. You don't want to wear this ring for the boss fight, otherwise you will die immediately. We are going to wear full havels, however, because that should make us tanky enough to fight this boss without it being much of a struggle. And then you don't have to run all the way down the staircase, I just ran down a little bit, so I wouldn't have to deal with any ghosts coming into the boss fight. Which they can just come through the wall still. They don't care that there's ghosts or there's a fog wall. But yeah, now we're going Havel mode. We'll actually buff up. And we're fat rolling. But if you get close enough to these guys, they do not hit very hard. And we're going to have a lot of poise. So you can see we're hardly taking any damage. We want to kill a little bit faster though, we're a little bit slow. And then at, when he's at low health, you just want to save him and then hit him as much as possible because you can keep getting damage on him. Ow. And then always just get in their face. They actually do less damage if you're close to them. And the only thing that can really mess you up is if they grab attack you that'll take up a lot of time and they might be able to summon another one this can also hurt a lot we just drink through that he's doing it twice which is really unfortunate just keep drinking we need to catch up to this guy yeah he summoned another one which is very obnoxious and our lightning stuff died okay we killed him right before That's gonna hurt. So you can see our low damage is definitely making this a little bit more difficult. But. Okay, we were in range of that, so that's unfortunate. We just gotta get close to him. And start hitting again. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it this time, actually. Yeah, we're dead. Oh, I lived. Oh, we had to roll that. We just do not have the damage, huh? That is very unfortunate. I was hoping we would have the damage to be able to do this at the moment. So, my secondary strategy is gonna be pop both of these we're trying to get some souls do we have any weapons that could make us do more damage? I just don't think so I think this is our best bet for damage dealing it's very unfortunate like our decks will give us a little bit more damage but we're actually going to go buy two charcoal pine resin from up here maybe three depending on how many souls these guys give and we'll try that again this strategy almost worked to kill the four kings we're just a little bit low on damage and the gold pine resin was doing good work but we ran out halfway through the fight and that kind of doomed us. We also ran out of Estus Flasks, but that's a different story. So 
So we're actually going to run over here. And this lady is going to sell us charcoal pine resin. Oh my gosh. We should have taken off Abel's armor to do this. <laughs> And we'll have enough to buy three. And we're actually just gonna take off Abel's armor anyways, because running to the boss, we're probably not gonna want Abel's armor on. And we can change that once we actually get into the boss fight. We don't need transient curses anymore. Do need charcoal pine resin. So we'll give it another go. Hey, the charcoal pine is not making us do that much more damage, which is very unfortunate. So we just have one forking left. So we need to actually dodge now. was two hits. I had to go for it though. We were completely out of Estus flasks. Ah. I think we need both the charcoal pine and the full havels to do this. It's just so close actually frustrating how close it is to working. We could always buy the lightning pine because that was doing more damage, right? Let's try that. I think she sells a few uh, lightning pine resins. Alright, so we gotta make this jump right here. Not that difficult at all. So this guy should sell a few lightning pines. I think they were doing a lot more damage. They're gonna cost us a thousand a pop, and I think he only has three. Well, that is a shame, but no comeback yeah, I know. I was just checking how expensive everything was. So what if we use one of these? I don't know how big this is. Yeah, that's plenty. Should be able to buy all of them. Yep. That is all he has. So, I feel like this is our best attempt possible. We have... Lightning Pines, 11 Estus Flasks, and we know that we should just take Full Havel and just keep swinging. So let's equip both our lightning pines and our charcoal pines and make the run one more time. Can I do this without landing on another one? Sweet. So we are going to heal up, switch to our gold pine, find our souls, run that direction. immediately gold pine let's do this I hate that you did that attack first but it looks like I dodged it oh he did the grab immediately that's horrible it's gonna waste so much time the worst thing that can happen to us is fighting multiple kings at the same time yeah this is doing way more damage so we'll just drink is there a second king already here? Yeah, there is. That's really bad. Ow.
Drink. Hey, we're actually doing pretty good. Just drink right now while we regen stamina. And then we'll just get a whole bunch of hits off on him. We'll be full health. And we'll fight the last king. Wherever he may choose to spawn. Grab these souls right here. Where is he? Oh, there he is. As long as a second king doesn't spawn, I don't see how we would lose. Just waiting for full stamina always. Heal up, because why not? And then we'll go for the kill. We did it. Skip that cutscene. Oh, we actually get four humanity for this, so. Just for making it here. So this is going to allow us to now place the Lord Vessel for Koth instead of Framped. Which Framped will be pretty pissed about, but we're making an invasion character. That's what it's all about. Okay, let me, let me do this. So we need to place the Lord Vessel. Can rest at it, I suppose, but we don't have any Lord Souls to give. Then we need to talk to him because we need to go back to the abyss. We need to talk to him in the abyss. So we can join the dock raids. Before we join the Dark Wraiths, we might as well just use all of these. So if you have three twin humanities, the four kings looks like they're going to drop four regular humanities for you, and that's all you're going to need for this. And then we'll walk up to him. We will enter his covenant. He'll give us the dark hand, and then we are going to offer humanity, and we'll give him ten. And he gives us the red eye orb. So you can only use the red eye orb while you're in his covenant. So if you leave it, you will not be able to use the red eye orb anymore. And so the next thing we're going to do is probably finish our levels and then start upgrading our armor. 
So we obviously don't need this anymore. We'll put on all of our gear except for these because they're still slightly too heavy. So yeah, let's see if we can get all of our levels. Yeah, we can just barely get all of our levels. So that's gonna put us exactly at level 50. We're gonna be done leveling. Next time, we are going to do a few more steps to get our weapon and stuff. But other than that, we do already have, we don't need any of this stuff, but we do already have the red eye orb. So if you just wanted to know how to get that and do it in a way where you could actually do it at a low level, we beat the four kings at level 46. It's obviously possible at lower levels, but it was still quite difficult. Either way, we have the red eye orb. We'll try and do a few more things to actually finish up our character next time. But I hope this was all useful, and I will see you next time.